Aloha and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm your host, Megan Russell. Our underwriter is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, a program of the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. I'm pleased to welcome our guest, Mitch Ewan, HNEI Hydrogen Systems Program Manager. Uh, today, we're going to talk story about hydrogen infrastructure, build it and they will come. Mitch, welcome to the show. Um, we are today are going to talk to you about why hydrogen infrastructure is so important to helping us meet Hawaii's clean energy goals. Well, thanks, Megan. It's really great to be here and be on the receiving end uh, as the guest rather than the host. So fire away. <laughs> All right. Um, so in general, what is the status of hydrogen vehicles in the state? So let's pull up the uh, first slide. So uh, basically, um, the, the real message is, is that uh, hydrogen vehicles have arrived. Uh, you can buy almost any kind of a hydrogen vehicle these days, uh, from a bus, a full paratransit, even a Class 8 uh, tractor-trailer type truck. Uh, of course, a whole bunch of different really cool cars, uh, baggage tow tractors at airports, uh, heavy you know, medium-duty delivery vans like for FedEx, heavy duty uh, garbage trucks, and the list goes on. So the bottom line is uh, we have the vehicles. That's awesome. Um, why don't we have more of them? Well, let's have a look at slide two. So the challenge is it's the infrastructure. So how do we fuel them? Like I personally would have my own hydrogen car if I knew where to fuel it. Right now, we only have one public uh, fueling station in Hawaii. That's at Servco on Oahu. And they have a fairly small hydrogen production uh, station. Um, so they can not uh, they can cope with a few marais that they uh, lease out, but they don't have the capacity to fuel a lot of cars. So it's the infrastructure that we have to put in place uh, to be able to fuel vehicles and build it and they will come. Perfect. Um, so I understand HNEI has a hydrogen infrastructure program. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to do it. Let's uh, look at the next slide, slide three, I believe. So yeah, so we have a, we've been uh, running this program for many, many years. And uh, what we did, decided to do is actually focus a lot on the infrastructure. And uh, we, we're doing that to support the introduction of fuel cell electric bus fleets uh, for public transportation. Um, there's a lot of reasons for doing that. First of all, um, for public outreach and support. And after all, the taxpayers at the moment are paying for this infrastructure. And so instead of having gas, uh, gasoline or, sorry, hydrogen stations uh, for uh, you know, fairly wealthy people, uh, with their nice cars, uh, with buses, everybody, it doesn't matter what your uh, situation is, you can actually get on the bus, experience the, uh, the, the bus itself, it's quiet, no diesel fumes, and, and get familiar with uh, hydrogen and get comfortable with it. And uh, like in England, I have a friend who lived in England for a while, they had hydrogen buses, and they'd always wait for the hydrogen bus to show up instead of the smelly old diesel bus. And they just liked everything about it, the ride, no smells, and, and uh, it was so quiet. It was almost like a stealth vehicle. And so um, the general public will then start getting familiar with uh, hydrogen, and they're going to like it. That's what I predict. <laughs> they're going to really like it. And if they like it, then they're going to talk to the uh, political class, um, and they're going to get political support and because, you know, politicians react uh, to the taxpayers and eventually, I mean, they're, um, uh, they need to get reelected. And so if they do something unpopular, they're not going to get reelected. So, so it's a great way to out, um, provide public outreach and introduce um, the technology. Um, the other part of the program, of course, is the hydrogen has to be cost competitive uh, for, as a transportation fuel. Uh, right now, it's not, uh, frankly, but it, for my program, uh, it's, it's not meant to be necessarily economic at this point in time. Uh, we're going to work on that and, and, how do you, and look at how we can produce hydrogen cheaper than what we can get it for it now. But this is a de-risking program. It's to show that the systems work 
to get familiar with it. And over time, we can look at how we reduce the cost of the hydrogen. And of course, we want to increase the use of renewable energy sources, particularly on the big island where they have geothermal, wind, PV, and, um, and, and really important, uh, a lot of municipal waste that's all now consolidated on the uh, west side of the island. And Riley Sato and the county are looking at that as a source uh, for uh, making hydrogen. And we think it'll be quite competitive. Um, we, this is utility scale. This is not lab scale in a lab laboratory at a university on a bench. This is big stuff. It's big equipment um, and it takes a big, uh, a lot of big money to, to get it done. Um, and uh, we also want to leverage the industrial benefits, i.e. jobs for Hawaii. So right now, when we buy a bus, we export our money to the mainland and somebody on the mainland builds the bus and they ship it to Hawaii. So why not build a kit? And uh, I've talked to a bus company over there. They're willing to provide a kit. And uh, we assemble it in Hawaii in a, a you know, rough back of the envelope cal calculation. Um, about 75% of the money we spend for the bus would stay in our local economy. So what's wrong with that? Plus the people assembling it, uh, they're going to become more familiar with the uh, with the technology. So it's gonna be like workforce development and it's gonna introduce a whole new industry for Hawaii. And finally, we wanna transfer the lessons learned to the neighbor islands. I mean, Hawaii always wanted to start on the big island. Uh, if you look at the legislation uh, for the hydrogen economy, they said start on the big island first. That's because it's big and has lots of renewable energy. And then once we get it you know, nailed down here, then they can, uh, we can export the, the know-how and show how to the neighbor islands, including Oahu. Long answer, but that's it. <laughs> oh, great answer. Uh, that's awesome information. That sounds like a really exciting program. Um, so one of the things you talked about a lot were these buses. Um, so why the focus on these heavier duty vehicles right now? Okay, the, the, let's have the next slide up. So uh, first of all, uh, it's really good capital utilization. So, you know, instead of uh, fueling one or two cars a day or two or three cars a day, we're fueling a whole fleet of vehicles all at one time. And so that means that your capital or your, your hydrogen station is working all the time. And it's not just sitting around uh, collecting dust and uh, wasting uh, that money. Um, secondly, uh, we, it's really important to build the hydrogen demand quickly. By that, I mean, we want to generate a lot of hydrogen. The more hydrogen we, we uh, need, the better, uh, because at some point in time, uh, private industry will say, hey, I can make money here. As Richard Howe always says, you know, farmers farm when uh, farmers make money. And it's the same with private industry for people who run gasoline stations right now. They'll, they'll uh, invest in a, in a station when they figure out that they can make money. Right now they can't uh, because it's so new and that's why we're using taxpayers' dollars. But we wanna get the, you know, free the taxpayers off up as soon as possible by getting enough hydrogen so that there's enough uh, flow through for people to make money at it. Um, I'd also like to point out a real advantage of uh, hydrogen is you can fuel these vehicles very quickly, the buses quite quickly. So one dispenser actually can support about 20 buses. And uh, I have a little uh, diagram further on in our presentation, which illustrates that. Um, but you may ask, well, what about the light duty guys? You know, the rich guys with the cars? I mean, we can still uh, let them have access uh, to the fueling station um, uh, which is what uh, AC Transit in California has done this. They have a pump uh, dispenser outside the main gate to allow early adopters to come and fuel their vehicles. And that helps increase the hydrogen demand, which is going to help everybody and get us to the point where business can take over and actually make money at it. And it also leverages the, all that taxpayers' money that went into building the infrastructure. I mean, it's kind of dumb to have a station just sitting there and you have somebody who wants to fuel his car, but you won't let them. So we just have to put the procedures and policies in place to allow that to happen. That's exciting. Um, so talking about fueling these cars, HNEI has a hydrogen station. Could you tell us more about that and where it's located right now? 
Yeah, let's have the next slide up. I just happen to have a slide that <laughs> illustrates that. So, so here you see a map of the Big Island, and, and basically our first hydrogen station on the Big Island uh, is at the Nelha facility, the Natural Energy Laboratory uh, Authority. Um, it's right beside the Kona Airport. As you fly into Kona, you'll probably see it. Uh, um, you'll see a bunch of um, um, uh, parabolic uh, mirrors and things like that. But you know they have a large uh, aquaculture operation going there. So we uh, set up there. It's the Natural Energy Lab, after all, and this is a great place for us to do it. It was really great working with Nelha. I mean, uh, they they really supported this project big time. We wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for them. So the idea is we uh, do production. We call it centralized production and distributed dispensing, just like a refinery where, where the, uh, the uh, oil comes in and uh, crude oil comes in to refine it, and then they spread it out with trucks. And we're doing the same thing. So we'll have a dispenser at our site at Nelha, but we're also planning to put in a second dispensing facility, as you can see on the right-hand side over at Hilo, where Mass Transit, uh, MTA is Mass Transit Agency, and uh, who run the Helion bus. They have their main facility there right now. So we're planning to put in a hydrogen dispensing uh, system there. And we will transport hydrogen uh, there using hydrogen transport trailers. I have some pictures later uh, in the following slide. And uh, that's just hauled by a truck across the uh, island to the other side, drag and drop. You haul a full one over and you pick up the empty and bring the empty back. So that's, uh, that's the basic project and how, how it works. So let's talk about pictures. Um, do you have a picture of what this station looks like or can you tell us about it, more about it? I do, I plan for this. So if we can have up the next slide. So uh, this is a rendering, a 3D rendering done by my uh, our tech over there, Aaron McCall. He's awesome using uh, SketchUp. So if he's listening to this, well done, Aaron. But this shows the basic um, layout. Uh, so of course, dominated by a 40 foot shipping container right at the front end, uh, you know, on the lower level of, of that picture. And that houses a, an electrolyzer that makes 65 kilograms of hydrogen per day, i.e. in 24 hours. And on the left, it's compressed by a pretty big compressor. Um, and then on the right, we have a computer control system because this is totally automated. You don't have to have anybody there. Uh, the driver just has to attach the uh, dispensing hose to the bus and hits the computer screen and the computer takes over. The reason we do that is to the extent possible, we want to keep people out of the loop because the less people involved, the safer it is because most uh, accidents are caused by people making mistakes. And, uh, you know, by, by putting in uh, really good software and thinking all the possible things that could go wrong, uh, we kind of uh, uh, design that out of the loop. And so on the left, you'll see uh, th th there's a little uh, blue uh, um, uh, unit there. That's the dispenser. I have a picture of it further on, and it's covered by a canopy uh, to keep the sun off the screen as much as possible. And then the upper right, there's our three tube trailers that we have. Each trailer carries 100 kilograms of hydrogen. That's equivalent to 100 gallons of gasoline. And uh, then we have a bunch of auxiliary equipment on the right-hand side. And then all the electric, all the electric supply is on a on a um, concrete block wall on the up, up other side. So, so that's uh, the basic layout. And if we go to the next slide, that's what it looks like in real life. Funnily enough, it looks just like the three D rendering. And uh, all the lines, everything goes under that slab. It's all undergrounded so that people can't run into it and break it. You'll see there's the, the orange and white uh, crash bearers. That's in case some nutcase decides he wants to uh, smash into it with a car. So that stops that. So we, you know, when we do our HAZOP analysis, we look at all the kind of eventualities that, that could take place. Um, so that's kind of how it looks today. And um, uh, NAN Construction did all the concrete work and they did a fantastic job, I must say. And it was managed by Nelha staff. Uh, Alex Leonard was the project manager to put in all the uh, all this site work and he did a fabulous job. That's exciting. That looks awesome. And you're right, just like the 3D rendering. So congrats. Um, yeah. 
So you talked about some of the maybe safety issues that come with dispensing hydrogen. Can you tell us more about how the hydrogen is dispensed to the bus? And then too, about how it's stored before it's dispensed? Yeah, so uh, let's flip up the next uh, slide. So uh, there you see, a, there's a picture of the dispenser. And it, it, you'll notice it looks like a regular gasoline dispenser, funnily enough. And it carries out all the same functions, uh, but it's got a computer operated touch screen right in the middle. Just like when you go to the gas station, you put your credit card in and you, you know, decide you know, if you're gonna pay at the pump or pay at the cashier. So it's all, like I said before, it's uh, totally computer controlled. Uh, we call it a cascade fill. That's just uh, the way they fill a hydrogen car. You use different pressures of hydrogen and you equalize it going from low pressure to high pressure. That's all done automatically with uh, air operated valves that are controlled by the uh, computer. It's unattended. As I said before, we have UV and IR, that's ultraviolet and infrared uh, flame detectors, which are looking down at where the fueling is taking place. So in case something happens and it's all, that's all connected into a safety shutdown system and fire alarm system. Um, and the ESD is emergency shutdown. It's just, um, you'll see it at gasoline stations too. If something happens, all you have to do is hit the button that shuts the whole station down. And then we have fire alarms uh, spread around throughout the uh, units uh, throughout the site. And they give off uh, either a siren so you can hear it and or a flashing strobe and, and a flashing strobe light. So um, if we go to the next slide, uh, here's a picture of our hydrogen transport trailers. I call them smart trailers because they're computer controlled and once again with these air operated valves. And on the right is a boost pump system because when we, when you haul the trailer to Hilo and are using it to fill the bus, you only get half the hydrogen out because of the way it equalizes. So that's not very efficient because you got to haul a trailer back that's half full. So we challenged our, uh, our supplier, uh, PowerTech uh, Labs out of Canada that say, we got, we've got to do better than that. So they uh, worked on a design and they uh, developed a boost pump system. So it's always sucking hydrogen from the lowest tank and keeping the pressure up as high as it can go. So we can get almost about 90% of the hydrogen out of it, uh, which is really good. And it's like reduces your transport port costs by about 50%, which is a huge deal when you think uh, it costs about, you know, four or $500 to ship a trailer from one side of the island to the other. Um, that's uh, pretty expensive to do it. If we can save half of that, that's a huge saving. So hats off to PowerTech and uh, yeah, the system is, uh, you know, it's been built, it's ready to go. Uh, as soon as uh, we have our designs completed over at the Hilo side, we'll be, in, we'll be installing that system. Meanwhile, here, uh, I call it, say here, here, here at, at Nelha, we, we use these trailers as well to, to fill buses at the Nelha site. We don't have any ground mounted uh, storage. So that's about all I can get out of that slide. That's exciting. So you mentioned that you had fueled buses yet. Do you have photo proof of this? Yes, I do. If you haul up the next slide, you'll see our first hydrogen bus, 21 passenger bus. Uh, it was just delivered to, uh, to Nelha on the 23rd of March. So that's that about two weeks ago, maybe. And we did our first uh, fueling on the 24th. And uh, if you go to the next slide, uh, there's yours truly uh, doing oh. that first fill. Recognize the shirt. <laughs> and uh, the amazing thing is that everything worked. All this underground cabling and pipe work and valves and fittings and sensors and wires, it all worked, <laughs> which is what I was staying awake at night, what, you know, stressing out about, well, you know, we do all this. It's all underground under a six inch slab of concrete. If we had to repair something, I can't see us having to jackhammer it all up. So uh, that was a, that was a big event for all of us. It was a Miller time event. Yeah, congratulations on a successful first pump. So do you yeah. have a workforce in training to help out with future pumps? Yeah, 
Uh, we've uh, developed some workforce training. I mean, this is a, a potential speed bump to making faster progress. I think it's something that people leave till the end. You know, they start a project and uh, they look at all the, you know, all the equipment and get that all running. Is uh, and the question is, well, who's going to operate it? You know, well, you have to have people that are trained up on it to to operate the thing, and um, so. Um, We've been developing this for uh, quite a long time. Uh, Aaron and I have been developing uh, safety manuals, operational manuals for like two or three years. And what we did uh, recently, now we're we're uh, producing slide decks because you know it's kind of hard for people to read one of these big manuals. And so uh, we're we're pulling out the highlights, and we're we're uh, starting a workforce development program. We had our first. Uh, session uh, on Monday this week where we had the senior people from Robert Sawai uh, attend for a train the trainers session. And uh, some of the things we have to overcome is first of all, there's fear out there uh, on safety. You know, a lot of people are concerned about hygiene safety. So we have to address that, train them up on hygiene safety, how to operate safely. They're also, you know, this is high voltage because it's electric drive. So they have to become familiar with that. And right now this is all new stuff. So we, we, we're, we have a pretty uh, you know, detailed, uh, both the hygiene safety course and then an operators course. And then of course, there's a lot of concern about job security because you know, it's, right now it's a diesel fleet and you have diesel mechanics and people who are trained to work on diesels. And they're saying, well, gee, you know, when you get these electric vehicles, what's gonna happen for me? So we've got to help them. Uh, make that transition over from uh, what they're doing now so that they can continue to have their jobs and uh, provide the services they do uh, with this kind of a vehicle. And that should not be difficult. Uh, it's actually pretty, most actually mechanics like the electric vehicles because it's cleaner. Um, it's pretty easy overall. We're, we're, you know, they don't have to get into the details of like overhauling a fuel cell or anything like that. A lot of it's uh, repair by replacement. And so I like to make the point, I think there's a, a real uh, mistake some people are making is like, we're not training academics here, you know? And I think, uh, for example, the USD, we gave a contract to EPRI and the winner, uh, and, and they had a lot of universities involved in it. And they, they went, I think, uh, looking at their first report, I was, a little, I was disappointed that it seemed to be more uh, focused on the academics rather than the blue collar workers, the guys that actually, you know, have to do, you know, wrench in hand or screwdrivers. I mean, the guys that actually do the work. So I think we need to do a better job for our blue collar workers. And, uh, and that's the course we're doing right now is hands-on. This is exactly what you have to know with little checkoff lists of, uh, you know, what the procedures are. And it's not, we're not training PhDs and we're not training master's students or BSCs, we're training, uh, you know, the guys that actually, you know, get the work done. So That's exciting. It sounds like you're providing a lot of good opportunities for people who maybe might need to transition in the future um, to these alternative energy sources. So kudos for that. Um, so, so let's, let's throw out the next slide. Uh, So I, I said earlier in my pitch uh, today that, you know, one uh, dispenser can uh, uh, fuel 20, 20 buses or 20, in this case, 22 buses. So when we're doing uh, one of these diagrams, I, I looked at it and I said, wow, you know, if you, you calculate the amount of time it takes to fuel a bus, which is about 10 minutes, you know, uh, over a six hour period when, you know, the buses are back at the barn, um, I suddenly, little light bulbs flashed off. I said, well, that's 20 or 22 buses. And you can say the word, but you don't quite understand what it means until you see the picture. So, so the top picture is what the dispenser would look like. Uh, you see a little tube trailer there and you see a bus in the, in, right in front of the dispenser. Of course, it would take more than one tube trailer to fill up uh, all those buses. We'd have to have a very large supply of hydrogen. But the, but the point is, is that one dispenser can fuel 22 buses over a six to seven hour period. And so that saves a lot of money because you don't have to have an individual charger. If it was a battery electric bus, each char bus would have to have their own dedicated charger and all the... Uh, 
all the wiring and the power required to run that charger, whereas we can do it um, just uh, like fueling your car. And it's kind of like a drop-in solution. So we need to be looking at that as uh, part of the overall cost and, and the uh, how, how easy it is to fuel that number of buses. That's a lot of buses sitting there for one little dispenser like we have. No kidding. Um, well, we're coming to an end of the show. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience on this exciting program? Yeah, I want to come back. And my last word is let's throw up the last slide. This is all great stuff, but at the end of the line, I mean, the buses are great and the cars are great, but it's the infrastructure. It's like that guy uh, said uh, for President Clinton a long time ago, it's the economy, stupid. But I didn't want to use the word stupid in my slide. But, you know, we need to build the infrastructure. We need to build it as fast as possible because if we build it, they will come. I mean, that's what's stopping me from buying my own hydrogen car is I don't know where I can fill it. Uh, and so we need fueling stations for cars, trucks, buses, the whole gamut. And the faster we do it, the quicker we'll get it done. And the quicker we can make this, we meet the state's objectives of becoming a fossil fuel free, uh, carbon uh, decarbonized economy by uh, 2035, 2045. I mean, I think personally it's gonna take longer than that, but whatever, I mean, we gotta get after it and uh, stop talking and start doing. We've proven that can be done. There's no magic back here. You can see the, the hydrogen station. Now let's just build a whole bunch of these and get it done, Hawaii. Right on. Well, we'll have to leave it there. Uh, you've been watching Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we've been talking story about Hawaii's hydrogen infrastructure and why it's so important in contributing to Hawaii's 100% clean energy goals. Thanks to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Megan Russell. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.